This is Mark Kelly of The Roots welcoming you to another math tutorial video by Mr. Witt and Fort Bend Tutoring. FBT, where personalized math tutoring is the solution. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring and today's tutorial is going to be about indefinite integration, the power rule. That's right, finding out how to integrate, finding the antiderivative. So that's what the focus of this video is going to be about. So first, let's look at what the power rule is. Here we have the integral of u to the n du, which would be equivalent to u to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus your constant of integration. So what does all that mean to you? Either you have a variable or a function, let's say of x, raised to a power with respect to that variable. All right, And then to integrate that, you would take that variable or function and add 1 to its exponent divided by that same value then you'll add your constant of integration with the condition that n cannot equal to negative 1 which means that you can't use this rule if the exponent equals to negative 1 in other words you'll have to use another method in order to integrate that type of problem so we're gonna focus on problems that will use this rule so that's what we'll look at today let's go ahead and take a look at them in problem number one we have the integral of 4x plus 3 with respect to x so that's what dx means that means that this derivative that that you're trying to find the original function for was derived with respect to x. You need to know the variable that they derived the original function with in order to generate the original expression. In other words, they're giving you the derivative and you're going back in time, you're going to reverse the operation in order to find out what the original function was. So my first step here is to recognize that we have two terms within the parentheses here. And using integration rules, we can separate this into two separate integral problem. So I'm going to start out by rewriting this as the integral of 4x dx plus the integral of 3 dx. All right. So like that. So I'm separating the problem. And notice that I'm keeping that dx to let the reader know I'm still doing this with respect to x. All right. The next step is to factor out the coefficient in each integrand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as 4 times the integral of x dx plus 3 times the integral of 1 dx. All right. At this point, my next step will clarify exactly what we're dealing with as far as the integrands are concerned. For instance, you need to know that your variable x is to the first power. All right. The next thing you need to be aware of is that technically you have your variable raised to the zero power which is equivalent to the value of 1. So since x to the 0 power is 1, we can use this form to show how the power rule is being applied to that term. So let's go ahead and continue from here. At this step, I'm going to straighten out those integral symbols to show this is the step that I'm actually integrating, all right? So it's good for you to know where you integrate it, and it's also good to tell the reader, hey, this step is where I'm integrating. And now we're going to apply the power rule. You're going to take this exponent of 1 on your variable x and add 1 to it. So we know that 1 plus 1 is just 2, right? So I'll end up with x squared divided by that same value of 2. All right. Then from there, I'll have plus 3, straightening out that integral symbol, will now show that 0 plus 1 will give me x to the first power over 1. You'll then add your constant of integration. The reason why you have to add this constant in is because when you're taking the derivative of a constant, that constant automatically goes to zero. And because we're trying to generate the original expression which that derivative came from, in other words, that 4x plus 3 came from what equation, we don't know what the value of the constant is with the given information. There will be times in other problems where you will be given enough information to get the exact expression that was used. However, in this indefinite integral, we aren't given that information. So we're using this C here as a constant of integration to inform the reader that it's plus some value. We just don't know what that value is. All right. Now we're going to simplify. So let's take this to the next page. So the next thing to do is to simplify and understand that everything on either side of this symbol here is multiplying together. Therefore, I can simplify this and say that 2 will go into 4 twice and I'll end up with 2x squared plus 1 goes into 3 3 times. So that'll give me 3x plus c. So there you have it. 
Done and done, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be the answer. And if you were to take the derivative of this final answer here, you would end up with the 4x plus 3. Also know that if you were given what is called the initial condition, where they're giving you a point from your original function, you can find out that value of c using that information. All right, so be aware of those type of problems as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and box up our result. Done and done. In problem number two, we have the integral of 2x cubed minus x squared plus 3x minus 7 dx. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack the problem using the power rule. All right, so we'll solve this problem first by expanding it into the integral of 2x cubed dx minus the integral of x squared dx plus the integral of 3x dx minus the integral of 7 dx like so. Once we have this, we can go ahead and factor out any coefficients. And of course, you can always simplify this process and do two things at once. But I like to show all my steps. All right. So here I have 2 times the integral of x cubed dx minus the integral of x squared dx plus 3 times the integral of x dx minus 7 times the integral of dx. So now I'm ready to apply the power rule. So I have 2 times x to the fourth power over 4 minus x cubed over 3 plus 3 times x squared over 2 minus 7 times x. Then we'll be adding our constant of integration, that plus c right there. Remember from our first problem that when we are taking the integral of dx or any constant for that matter, you'll always end up with an x to the first power after you're using the power rule. So this equals 1 half x to the fourth power minus 1 third x cubed plus 3 halves x squared minus 7x plus c. All right. And this is going to be your result for problem number two, ladies and gentlemen. Done. Red boxing it. There you have it. There's your answer. Problem number three coming up. All right. In problem number three, we have the integral of 1 over z cubed minus 3 divided by z squared with respect to z. Notice that our function has a variable of z and we're saying that things are with respect to z. So that means we'll be adding a z to each of these terms where we're using the power rule. But first, I'm going to start by rewriting this. Our problem can be rewritten as the integral of z to the negative third power dz minus the integral of 3 z to the negative 2 power dz. I can then show that I have the integral of z to the negative third power dz. I can factor out that coefficient of 3 to have the integral of z to the negative 2 power dz. So now integrating, I'll have z to the negative 2 power over negative 2. Remember, it's always your exponent plus 1. So since that original exponent was negative 3, after I rose that base from the denominator to the numerator, I end up with negative 2 when adding 1 to the negative 3. And you're going to place it over that same value of negative 2 as well. All right. Then this will be minus 3 times z to the negative first power over negative 1 plus your constant of integration. From here, I'll be simplifying this to end up with negative 1 half z to the negative 2 power plus 3 z to the negative first power plus c. So depending on your book in your class, you may be able to write your answer this way, but let's assume you have to get rid of your negative exponents. And if that's the case, you'll have a result that reads negative 1 over 2z squared plus 3 over z plus c, of course, that constant of integration. And this will be your answer here. And done. In problem number four, we have the integral of the quantity of 2x minus 5 times the quantity of 3x plus 1 dx. At first glance, you may believe you need to use some form of the product rule. However, it's not going to be necessary for this problem. The reason for that is because your binomials here are raised to the first power. And nothing prevents you from multiplying this together to make it an easier form to deal with. So let's multiply these two binomials together. All right. In other words, get those arrows Popping, all right? Get those arrows popping, ladies and gentlemen. And when you do that, you'll end up with the integral of 6x squared 
minus 13x minus 5 dx. So we were able to rewrite it in this form after you simply multiply those binomials together. From there, I'll attack this problem just like I did the other ones. So I'll end up with the integral of 6x squared dx minus the integral of 13x dx minus the integral of 5 dx. Then, factoring out my coefficients here, I'll have 6 times the integral of x squared dx minus 13 times the integral of x dx minus 5 times the integral of dx. Then, integrating, you'll have 6 times x cubed over 3 minus 13 times x squared over 2 minus 5 times x plus your constant of integration. All right, from here we'll go ahead and simplify and that'll be that. All right, so simplifying our result here, you'll end up with 2x cubed minus 13 halves x squared minus 5x plus c, and this is your answer here. Done and done. All right, ladies and gentlemen, getting through these problems. Next, we have problem number five. In problem number five, I have the integral of 2x squared minus x plus 3 divided by the square root of x, dx. So the first thing I'm looking at is a mess. So the first thing to do is to change this radical in the denominator into exponential notation. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as the integral of 2x squared minus x plus 3 divided by x to the 1 half power dx. From here, I'm going to expand this by dividing each and every term by x to the 1 half power to end up with the integral of 2x to the 3 halves minus x to the 1 half plus 3 x to the negative 1 half dx. So what I did here was that I took each of the terms in the numerator and divided each of them by x to the 1 half power. You would end up with 2x to the 3 halves because that 2 is the same as 4 halves and 4 halves minus 1 half is 3 halves. And you go ahead and do that to each one of those terms to end up with this integrand. From there, we'll go ahead and expand it and use the power rule just like we did before. So you'll have the following. I'll end up with 2 times the integral of x to the 3 halves dx minus the integral of x to the 1 half dx plus 3 times the integral of x to the negative 1 half power dx. And next we'll integrate. So with this first term here, I'll have 2 times x to the 5 halves divided by 5 halves. See, adding 1 to 3 halves, in other words, 2 over 2, to give me 5 halves. Then I'll have minus, this is going to be x to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves, plus 3 times x to the 1 half divided by 1 half, plus c. Simplifying our results here, you'll end up multiplying 2 times 2 fifths. Remember that 2 divided by 5 halves is equivalent to 2 times 2 fifths. So we'll end up with 4 fifths x to the 5 halves power minus 2 thirds x to the 3 halves power plus 6 x to the 1 half power plus c. And there's your answer, ladies and gentlemen, done and done. If you wish, you can convert those into radical notation if you like, but other than that, that's the answer, all right? And yes, that's the two right there. Yes, I know it's ugly. Yes, that one's ugly too. Okay, I'll, I'll change it, all right? Okay, are you happy now? It's changed. Let's go ahead and box up the answer. And this answer will be fine for most instructors, all right? You may have a few that'll want you to write it back into radical notation, and if that's the case, Put it back in radical notation. All right, that's problem number five. Let's move it to our last problem, problem number six. All right, in problem number six here, we have the integral of 2x to the 5 fourths power plus 6x to the 1 fourth power plus 3x to the negative fourth power dx. And we're asked to find the indefinite integral. All right, so let's do just that. So we'll begin by expanding this into 2 times the integral of x to the 5 fourths dx plus 6 times the integral of x to the 1 fourth dx plus 3 times the integral of x to the negative fourth power dx and then integrating from here. So 
this will be two times we're going to be adding one in the form of four fourths so this is going to be x to the nine fourths divided by nine fourths plus six times x to the five fourths divided by five fourths plus three times x to the negative third power over negative three all right and then of course you'll have your constant of integration so this is what we end up with after we integrate. The steps that you'll take from here is called simplifying. All right, so we'll simplify the result. So that'll give me 8 ninths times x to the 9 fourths power plus 24 fifths x to the 5 fourths power minus x to the negative third power plus c. Since my original problem had a negative exponent in it, you can go ahead and leave it in there because they started out with a negative. However, if you wish to rewrite that, you could get rid of that negative exponent and also write your answer as 8 ninths x to the 9 fourths power plus 24 fifths x to the 5 fourths power minus 1 over x cubed plus C, but either answer should be okay. But we'll just go ahead and box up the last one, being as though a lot of instructors, like myself, prefer you not to have negative exponents. All right, so let's go ahead and box up our results here. There you have it, done and done. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our lesson for finding indefinite integrals using the power rule. That's right, indefinite integration, the power rule, anti-differentiation, all of those things mean the same thing, ladies and gentlemen. And as always, please rate, comment, and subscribe. And if you're able, please donate as that helps us bring you more free math videos from me, Mr. Witt, and Fort Bend Tutoring. Peace. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Like our Facebook page, Fort Bend Tutoring, and visit us on the web at www.tutormemath.net.